there. I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. This week's video is a bit of a mixture of stuff. There is some painting, there's some life stuff, and there's a bit of a chitty video. So anyways, I hope you enjoy. Good morning, guys. Um, start of another week brings the start of a new painting. So that's exciting. It is um, very hot and humid here, hence the really messy pulled back hair. Um, it is also very stormy and cloudy out. So I'm hoping that the lighting won't be absolutely horrible in this video for today, but um, we'll see where we get started. I've got a panel prepped. I prepped it over the weekend because if you watched last week's video, you will have seen that the gesso took forever to dry in this hot and humid weather. So I decided to prep this um, a couple days in advance to make sure it was completely dry and ready to go. So um, yeah, let's get started. The underpainting is done and I am going to put uh, first a couple layers of the clear encaustic medium on here and get the wax heated up so I can do that and then we'll see where the rest of the day takes us. Okay, I tried a new kind of um, gesso paint on this board because um, I had heard that it worked with encaustic and it is doing this. I noticed when I was doing the underpainting, I was getting some gray in areas that I didn't have gray. And then when I put the encaustic medium down, it did this. So to solve that problem, I think I'm going to scrape off. <laughs> Luckily, I just have like one um, layer on here, so it should scrape off, come off pretty easily. I'm going to scrape it off and then put the encaustic gesso down that I normally use. Uh, a little disappointing, but that's okay. Experiment uh, failed, lesson learned, don't use that paint. <laughs> okay guys, I got this board sanded down where I had the encaustic medium on it because the encaustic medium of course sunk into the porous board and I was afraid that if I just applied the encaustic gesso over the encaustic medium, it would not stick to it. So I'm kind of starting over on this painting today, but um, it's okay. Lessons learned, right? <laughs> All right, it has been a um, longer day than normal. Um, I got the gesso on, the right gesso is on the panel now. And that took a couple hours to dry. And then I did the quick underpainting. I didn't film any of it because you guys saw it all to begin with, even though it didn't work out. Um, anyways, we are having leftovers for dinner. Thank goodness for leftovers. And I will uh, pick you guys back up tomorrow. And just like that, dinner is served. It is red lentil doll. And it's really good. It looks way better. <laughs> it tastes way better than it looks right now. But thank goodness for leftovers. See you in the morning. Good morning. Up in the studio a bit earlier than normal. I have the wax already turned on. I actually um, jumped on the treadmill this morning, which isn't unusual. Watched a couple uh, YouTube videos real quick while I was on the treadmill. But then I heated the wax right up um, so that it was ready to go first thing this morning. So ready to get started painting. I've got barely my second cup of coffee going here. And then we're going to get right into this painting before it gets too hot. Um, I think most of you know I'm not a huge summer fan. I know it's, it's strange. 
I know a lot of people are, and um, it's strange probably that I'm not. I just don't enjoy the heat. I know it's beautiful, and we have these gorgeous flowers blooming that we can bring inside from out in our gardens. Um, I am just not a summer person. Strange, I know. Anyways, let's get to painting. If you are a longtime viewer of my videos or a returning viewer, then you will know that me picking out colors and how I pick out my colors, how I melt the wax on the griddle and mix up the colors on the griddle is nothing new. However, what is new with this video is my new camera setup. A couple of videos back, a viewer had mentioned that she was hope she loved the video, but she would love it if I could move my camera around so that the video, the paintings weren't upside down as I was painting them. She, that you can see the painting from my perspective. So I looked into it and I went out and I got a swivel for my camera so that hopefully going forward, these videos will be a little bit more enjoyable for you and you will see the painting from my perspective, the way I'm painting it. Which brings me to my other point. If for any reason you have any questions or concerns, comments, any way that you think I can make these videos better, I would love to know. I appreciate all constructive criticism. And if I can feasibly correct the situation, I will definitely do that. So feel free to reach out. has arrived that I have been wanting for a while. Um, I think it's going to come in really handy with these large paintings. So um, I'm going to show you what it is here. It's super exciting. Okay, so it's just under these. What is it? What is it? What is it? Ba -ba -ba -ba! So exciting. A new griddle. Um, let's open it up and see how it works. You may be wondering why I need a new griddle don't really need a new griddle, but it's very handy when the I'm working on these large paintings or paintings with a ton of color, different colors in them, because I don't have to constantly clean off my palette to switch to a new color. And if I'm not completely done with the color and I have to clean it off, switch to a new color, and then I go back to that color, it's a little bit of a waste of paint. Not much paint, but still. Um, I think it's going to make um, this little studio life painting process a bit easier. So I'm super excited getting it heated up now and um, yeah, we'll see what temperature it gets to. And um, I just want to make sure I set it right. So I don't want it too hot, obviously, or too low. Um, I don't want to have any toxic fumes in the studio. So I've got it on. I've got the uh, little surface thermometer on it. And I'm just going to see how, what temperature I need to set it at, and then I can melt some wax onto it. It's really exciting. Yay. I think this is where I'm going to leave you for the night. I am super excited to try out that griddle tomorrow um, and cuckoo clock. <laughs> Anyways, I am super excited to try out that griddle tomorrow and yeah, we'll see where the day goes tomorrow. 
the painting is getting there. So um, that's good. It's only been really a one full day of painting on it. So um, I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. See you in the morning. Good morning. I have all three griddles plugged in. The wax is heating up. The griddles are heating up and I am about ready to start the day. I also have some of my essential oils going. My favorite for in the studio when I'm trying to really focus in on a painting is this rapid recall essential oil. So I've got my little essential oil diffuser going and we are ready to go. little tiny tree area with lots and lots of texture and a very very small brush so I zoomed in in the hopes that you guys could really get a feel for how detailed this uh, tree area is and what size brush I am using and the tiny little bits of wax that come out with each little brush stroke. Future me is interrupting this video just briefly to have a little heart to heart chat. I had a Zoom call earlier in the week with a group of very talented artists and we discussed a topic that I am still thinking about and I have a feeling if I'm feeling it and thinking about it then all of you are too. So I thought I could discuss it briefly with you guys. It seems we all get a sidetracked with doing it all, with doing the thing that we see everybody else doing. So we see another artist, another small business, a parent, a company, an individual doing this thing, whatever this thing is. And we think, oh, wait, I need to do that too. And then we see somebody else doing something different and we think, oh no, I need to do that too. And before you know it, we are overwhelmed right? We're trying to do it all and we can't do it all. Or we see how many comments, how many followers, how many likes people have. And we think, oh, I want that too. I want that many. We see the pretty pictures, right? We see these beautiful, gorgeous pictures of businesses and people's lives and travels. And we think, wait, why doesn't mine look like that? We want that too. We think we need to do it all. We have all the likes, have all of the popularity and that we better get our act together. But I would like you to think a little differently. I would like to encourage you to think a little differently. I would like you to get clear and about what makes you unique, what makes you beautiful, and what makes you, you, because there's only one you. And once you have that idea of what makes you unique and beautiful in your head, I want you to remind yourself of that every time you are feeling the overwhelm. Remind yourself of this beauty when you feel discouraged and remind your unique self of your talents when you have doubts. I hope this is encouraging. Um, I know I needed to remind myself of this and I hope that if you are feeling doubt and overwhelm that you are now finding your unique self and just remembering that because we all have these great talents and these great beauties within us and um, I just hope this helped.
<laughs> state of the studio this morning. It's quite a mess. But um, here's how the painting's looking. I think I have a couple more details to make, but, um, or to paint on there rather. But first I'm gonna try to clean up um, this area here so I can um, put the camera back up there and hopefully take a few more videos for you guys today. Yesterday I really got into um, working on this and I didn't record a ton so um, hopefully there's enough there but I did like a lot of detail on the rocks everywhere and then um, in the trees so yeah, so it's it's really starting to come along. It's almost done. But let's turn the wax on and get to painting. details and some more mixing on that new palette which by the way is working out beautifully and this painting is about done <music> tape on the side just in case there's any last minute changes I want to make but I'm pretty sure it's done I'm just gonna leave it hanging up here to just double check make sure I'm completely satisfied with it but we'll get you some close-ups here some of that texture where I filled the oil stick in there and the rocky shoreline of course, the water and the mountains off in the distance. And then the tree area. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. If you are feeling the overwhelm of everything, 
um, definitely you reach out. I'd love to know what is working for you and I hope my little heart to heart helped. If you did like the video, I would really appreciate it if you gave it a big thumbs up. If you have any other um, suggestions or have any questions about the painting process at all, definitely leave them below in the comments. And if you aren't subscribed and would consider doing so, I would so, so very much appreciate it. If you are subscribed but aren't getting notified, hit that bell down below and that will notify you every time I release a new video, which is usually on Tuesdays. Thanks again for watching. We'll talk to you soon and bye for now. Mm -hmm.